Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to episode 33 of Chess Basics, Things Every Chess Player Ought to Know. Uh, in this uh, episode and for the next few episodes, we're going to look at the case of uh, a piece battling against pawns in the endgame. And we're going to start out with um, the case of uh, pawns versus a rook. So, uh, pawn or pawns. So, to motivate this a little bit, uh, I'm going to uh, show you an example of how these situations can arise, because they, they do occur more often than you might realize. Um, and it often starts in a case like this. So this is uh, where the two sides have equal material, and white has an advantage just because uh, his pawn is more advanced. Um, Black's rook is actually in a good spot, trying to defend against the queening of the pawn and also uh, pushing Black's pawn, supporting Black's pawn, uh, but black's pawn is not far enough advanced than white's pawn is, so white has the advantage here. And the question is, uh, is that advantage enough to win? So uh, let's play it forward a few moves and you'll see the situation that arises. You push ahead with the pawn and queen and uh, you win your opponent's rook. And now the situation I was referring to has arisen where uh, white has the uh, rook and black has the pawn. And the question is, is this winning for white? And the answer here, in this particular case, the answer is yes. And the reason is because white's king is cut off on the fifth rank. So the rook is on the fifth rank and the king is further away than that. And the pawn is not close enough to queening. If he could queen immediately, um, then there might be a problem. But uh, in this position, uh, the pawn is too far away from queening and the king is cut off, so white can win. So it's um, Black's turn to move. Let's let's show how this works. Um, first of all, if he tries to push the pawn, you what you want to do is actually get your rook behind the pawn, attack it this way. But the king is guarding that square, so you can't do that. So you're l forced to attack it from the side. Um, but that's good enough in this case. The king is too far away to step forward and defend it. He's two steps away. So the pawn has to go forward, and now you can get your rook behind it. And so that's the significance of the king being cut off uh, behind the fifth rank is it's just far enough away that the rook can get behind the pawn and the king can't get up in time uh, to defend the pawn. So now it's it's black's turn to move but uh, but the pawn is not going anywhere and uh, white will win. So that's a win uh, but it's it's close. If we look at this situation uh, here with uh, white's uh, black's turn to move um, <clears throat> If uh, the pieces were just slightly more advanced, then, uh, then uh, black would be winning this. For example, here, let's, let's set up a new position. I'll show you that. Um, say if the white's rook were here instead and black's king were here. So uh, I've given uh, black's king a, a head start here. Now we can start pushing the pawn. You still can't get the rook behind it to attack it, and if you attack from the side, um, the king can come forward. And now uh, you can't take it. You could try and uh, stop it a couple different ways. For example, you could go here, and uh, the, the king comes forward, and uh, you try to get your king into the action, but it's a little too late here trying to slow it down. Uh, he comes forward, you try to bring your king forward, but you're just too far away and that becomes a queen. So it's all, and so that's a draw, obviously. So it's all very critical and depends on the exact uh, position of the, uh, of the pawns. But if you just remember, going back to this position, that if you can have the, if you have the black king cut off on the fifth rank, then uh, you can round up this pawn and uh, you can win the game. So that, that's, um, and you need to keep this in mind as you're, you're looking at this position, uh, you know, a few steps ahead as you're pushing your pawn forward. Are you in a position to cut off Black's king and can you get into a winning position? Because there may be other tries you have uh, besides just queening immediately if, if you can't achieve this setup. Okay, let's look at the next position here. Um, this is a case um, where the exchange has already happened and White was able to take back with the rook which is important because his king now is a bit closer to the pawn. So it's white's turn to move in this position, and uh, black can win if he can force uh, white to have to give up his rook for the pawn, um, but if, uh, if white can win that pawn, then white will win. So in this position, you might want to pause the video and think about it 
before I give away the answer. Um, it's White's turn to move. Keep that in mind. And the question is, can White get there in time to stop that pawn from becoming a queen, and, and can White win the game? Okay, I am going to uh, give the answer away now. This is a position that's winning for White. And uh, the most direct way to win, you just go straight for that pawn. The pawn is going to be pushed. You can keep going for it. The pawn gets pushed one more step. And you have this saving move here with the rook coming over behind the pawn, keeping it from going forward any further. The black king has to come up, and now the white king catches up. And once you're in this position, you're threatening to take the pawn. So um, this is a key position to remember. You're threatening to take the pawn, and uh, you're also defending against um, the pawn queening. So black makes one more move, but now you can just grab the pawn and, and go on to win. So that's the, the thing you have to evaluate. If we go back to the starting position, you have to uh, look at the position of both the king and the pawn and figure out how many moves um, it's going to take the pawn to get to the fourth rank, including the fact that you're going to come over here and attack it with the rook, so we'll have to move his king forward. And can your your king get to this position with your, your king on this square, his king on this square, and the pawn here. And if you can achieve that, uh, and it's and your rook going to this square. So that's, that's the position you want to get to, your rook here, your king here, uh, with his pawn still on the uh, second rank and his king here, not, not supporting the pawn. So if you can achieve that, then you can win the game. And so you can, you can figure it out by counting. It's one, two, three four moves and you get to go first so you go one <clears throat> he goes one two and three and then it's your turn you make your fourth move and you've achieved that position with your king here attacking the pawn and his king is still back on the third rank um, so if we go back to the beginning of this position um, and we change it just slightly This is a draw if black is just one more move advanced. You see, that was kind of the critical position there. Um, so let's just show you how that would happen. It's white's turn to move again. Uh, he comes forward just like before. Now the rook has to come over to stop the pawn from queening. Is that the wrong? That was the wrong square. Sorry about that. Right there. Stop the pawn from queening. Now it's uh, Black's turn to move. He gets his king to this square. That's critical. You come forward and attack the pawn, but now the pawn can become a queen. And then this is now a draw. So, so if we go back to the beginning, this is uh, a position which is a draw, whereas if the king is one step further back, then it's a win. So if we go back, cancel that. If we go back to this position, um, one other thing you need to watch out for is it's important uh, the, where the location of uh, Black's king is. So if his king is over on this side, he can actually hold a draw, and I'll show that. Um, and the reason is it takes White one more step to get to the pawn here because Black's king is in the way. Sometimes you can gain a tempo, a tempo by checking. Um, but it doesn't help in this case. Um, the black king can just go back and forth like this. Um, since black can only get a draw in this situation, he can just go back and forth. So at some point, you have to give up and attack the pawn. King comes over to defend, and now you come up and try and attack the pawn. But you see the king is guarding all of these squares, and now white's uh, king can't get in any closer. And again, if... Uh, if uh, you try to check, the king is just going to go back and forth. It's not really going to matter at all. And the pawn will become a queen. So if we go back, this is a situation which is once again a draw. But if the king were on the other side, um, then this white king has a straight shoot to where the pawn is and the rook is placed on c8 and you can stop the pawn just in time. So this is uh, the critical position, or if we go back, this is the critical position where white wins and if, if uh, black has just a slightly more advantageous changes position with the king forward, the pawn forward, or the king here blocking uh, white's king, then, then black can hold a draw in this situation. Okay, so that's um, pretty much it for one pawn against the rook. Um, the other interesting case with, in pawns versus rook that you should know about 
is the case of two pawns versus a rook. So with two pawns versus a rook, um, the pawns can actually win. Now, it's not just holding a draw. It's, it's actually going on to win the game. So the way this works is like this. If you've got two pawns on the sixth rank and they're not under attack by white, then you can win, even if, uh, even if it's not... Even if it's not your move, in other words, if it's white's move here, you still win with the two pawns. And um, the other point is the kings have to be out of play. So we have a situation where it's purely the rook fighting against these two pawns. So let's try a couple things. You could try attacking from the side, but uh, you just push the pawn forward. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, when the other pawn is taken, this one queens. Um, and if we back up, if you don't take that pawn, if you come in here and try to stop the pawn from going forward, uh, this that stops one pawn, but now the other pawn can go forward, and now once again you can only take one of the pawns, and the other one is going to queen. So what else could you try? Um, you could try attacking from behind, um, <clears throat> and then uh, black just pushes the pawn that you're not attacking. So you can grab this pawn, but this one queens. So the two pawns on the six are very strong. And uh, unless you can take one immediately, uh, those, those two pawns are going to win. Of course, if white's king was in front of the pawns, it would be a different story. If, white king gets, if white's king gets in front of the pawns, it can freeze them, and then the uh, rook can round them up, and then, then white can win. Um, the other thing is uh, the winning technique here is, is pretty tricky. Um, so it is known that uh, a, rook, a queen versus a rook is a winning endgame. But it takes a lot of moves in general. So uh, what you should do in a situation like this, um, if it was black's turn to move, for example, you could just place the queen here. That would pin the rook and the king, and there's no way to defend the rook, and you would just win it immediately. So uh, there's lots of tactics in these openings, and uh, it just takes a while, and you have to play them. So <clears throat> if you're in a situation where, where you have the queen versus the rook, you should know that it's a winning endgame. It can be won in less than 50 moves, um, but it takes a lot of maneuvering sometimes. Um, there's two kind of strategies. One is to try and separate the king from the rook and then apply something like a skewer or a fork. You know, if your queen were uh, sitting on some square, like uh, uh, actually the way the, the way the pieces are set up, it's hard to illustrate, but it, like if the queen were on this square, let's erase these lines and the black king were somewhere else, the queen from here could be attacking the rook and delivering a check. You can pick it up th in that way. Or a skewer. So looking for skewers, pins, and uh, forks to pick up the piece. And then the second way to win is if uh, white keeps his pieces huddled close together, then you use the king and the queen together to creep in and kind of deprive the king of spaces and try to go for a direct checkmate. So anyway, you just have to play it out and uh, just keep playing with <laughs> with the knowledge that uh, that you have the advantage, you have the ability to win uh, with perfect play. But there's no simple uh, strategy I can give you for winning that one. So, <laughs> but uh, definitely worth playing out. You, you'll find that uh, if you play against a computer, it's very hard to win. But when you play against a, a normal uh, human opponent, um, they they usually will make a mistake before too long, and you'll you'll find a way to uh, pick up that rook and win the game. Okay, so. Um, that's it for the uh, two rooks versus the, the uh, two pawns versus the rook in the winning case. There's one more case um, I wanted to look at. This is a draw, <coughs> and uh, it's white's turn to move again, and it's just important to find, to, to illustrate the drawing technique, because there's only one move that draws here, uh, and other moves lose. And what you want to do is you want to put the rook behind the pawn that's most advanced so that uh, when the other pawn moves you can just take it and then it's not going to get to uh, to the eighth rank in time and be able to round it up and white will win um, and going here if uh, and of course this pawn can't move because you can just take it and once again you have no trouble you have no trouble rounding up this pawn because the kings are out of play. So, uh, so in a situation like this where the pawns have not reached 
the sixth rank, or both of them have not reached the sixth rank, at least one of them hasn't, then you can uh, win the game. But it's important to get behind the most advanced pawn. So if we go back uh, to this situation and, and look at a slightly different position, um, if the black king is just one step closer, if it's over here, this is now a win for black. So that just that one move has changed this from being a win for white to a win for black. And the reason is that uh, the square c6 is no longer available. You can't get behind that pawn. So if you go to attack the other pawn, the uh, advanced pawn is just too close. You can round up one pawn, but then you, uh, you lose the other one and you lose the game. So uh, once again, uh, <clears throat> Black is going to have to work to win this one, but uh, he's got the winning chances because he's got the, the queen versus the rook. So um, so that's, that's uh, what I wanted to talk about in this episode. It's the, uh, the case of one pawn versus a, a rook where you can draw if you have the king cut off or if your own king and rook are close enough to stop the pawn from queening. And then the case of two pawns versus a rook where the two pawns can win if they're on the sixth rank. Um, or if they can get to the sixth rank with the help of their uh, their king. So I uh, hope you guys found that instructive. Leave any comments you have in the section below. And uh, in future videos, I'm going to look at the case of uh, pawns versus bishop and pawns versus knight. So uh, stay tuned. See you then. Bye.